Hello YouTubers! One game that's been gaining in popularity is a city simulation game called Banished. This game is based um, in the medieval times, so it's not like SimCity in the sense that it's looking towards the future and uses current technology. Um, you're more concerned with just surviving um, and not freezing to death or starving to death in this game. And even though that sounds simple, it's actually fairly difficult. It's kind of a challenge to make it through the first season, and so I thought I'd make a quick video to show you um, how I get through the first season. I'm sure there are many ways to do it, and it is also kind of dependent upon uh, what map you're given. So, with that said, let's go ahead and give her a go. We'll keep our starting conditions on medium, and I like to play in valleys versus the mountains, because mountains are really, really hard. <clears throat> I'm also going to keep the climate to fair, um, which is in line with, I think, um, our starting conditions as median. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do um, when the game actually starts up is to pause it. And there's a number of reasons why you want to do this. Uh, the primary one, though, is that you need literally every single second you can get at the beginning um, to make a plan. And the reason why you need every single second will become quite obvious. So I've paused it. Uh, the first thing I do is I scroll back and take a quick look around my surrounding area. I can see that probably three or four seasons down the road, I'm going to have to somehow bridge out from my starting area. I'm either going to have to cross the water or tunnel through this mountain range. And actually, tunneling through the mountain range looks like a pretty good option, but that's much later. Okay, so the first thing that I usually do is I start with a road. And the game always starts off by giving you kind of this square here um, of just empty space. And that's really nice because that's where I usually like to build my first couple of houses that you need to build um, so that your community is not homeless. Uh, that's actually what all of those uh, houses mean above each person. Um, also, if you hit the F2 key, or actually I'll just do it with the menu, to pause it, I went to this menu, or F1, and hit the 2 key, or this pause button. Um, F2 over down here will take you to the tools and reports. <coughs> Excuse me. There are two menus here that I always like to keep open. Uh, the first one is number one, this one. And it just gives you some general information about your town, current population, amount of wood you have, firewood, or iron tools, coats, medicine, coal, <coughs> food, and ale. The important ones we're going to be monitoring for Season 1 is stone, iron, food, and wood. Possibly firewood. Um... The other menu is the fourth one over, or number four, and I drag that one over here, and this one I just use as a quick context switch menu so that I can um, micromanage my townspeople in terms of assigning them uh, what job they need to be doing. Next I'm going to click on this one to build a road, and I always like to keep my town um, pretty tidy, so I usually go straight down the center, and I cut across the front. And then I usually just go all the way down um, until I start to hit trees and whatnot. <clears throat> and what this does is it gives me a very nice cut, clean area to start building some houses. And so that is what we'll do. I recommend building wooden houses to start because wood is a much easier resource to gather. Um, so we'll go ahead and just build probably four of these to start and you should have enough resources to do so. Personal opinion here, I like to build my houses in clusters of four, so to do that I would go like, um, and when I say a cluster of four, I mean so that it looks like this, and what I do is I wrap my road around so that if my people need to go collect resources on the other side, for example, um, they only have to walk north and south as we're looking here up and down I guess um, they only have to walk so far around any structure at any given time and it just it's, it's basically a grid format it helps to uh, get your people around so 
I'm going to start off and say that um, probably six houses is about what you want. <clears throat> You're going to want probably everyone selected to be a builder. Uh, the last thing that you're going to want to do, and I did kind of set this up here uh, with this in mind, is you're going to need food production. And there are two, because of where we're started, there's going to be two opportunities for us to get food right off the bat. Um, the first one is that this obvious stream running through here, and it's wide enough to be a trader stream, so we'll, we'll eventually be building a, a, uh, a trader's, or what's it called? A trading post on the water but for now what, we'll, what we want to do is build um, a fishing dock um, however I'm gonna do that a little bit later just because I know that um, there are other more important things that need to be done literally right off the bat and that is food if you don't have stable food by the time the first winter comes around you will starve and you will lose probably three or four people which doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind that you only have 10 working adults to start out. So, in an effort to not starve, let's go ahead and build a really, really large field. Personal preference for me. Um, I like to make my fields and my pastures as large as they can possibly be. I am kind of a go big or go home type person, and so that's just the way it works. The, <clears throat> again, personal preference, I could have made a smaller field over here. Um, the reason why I didn't though is because one, I like to make bigger fields, and two, you saw that there was absolutely no construction that was needed because this was already clear, and that was just a lucky roll of the dice. Mm. But if you did have to actually do construction on the field, and you made your village set up like I did where you built your houses first, you actually want your builders to start working on the field first, because they need to finish it as fast as possible so that they can start planning it this season. The key to not dying of starvation is to get a crop harvest in on your first season. Um, it's not necessary, but... It's personally the way I like to start off my villages because crop harvests are a very dependable resource as long as you have people to work the fields. And it's just way easier than building one or two, you know, two fishing huts and then possibly a gathering station elsewhere. Just make a field. You don't have to deal with the gathering station yet. Um, and you can make a fishing hut if you want to just so that you have a secondary source of food. So we've assigned this field to be corn. Do not forget to populate farmers to it. You probably want to max out your farmer count so that they can get started planting as quick as possible. <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to set up before I turn my people to go to town here is I'm going to start my resource collection. Um, I do this for two reasons. One is because we will need additional wood um, iron and stone in order to support our building for the next season um, but also because I can't really build anything unless I get all this junk cleared out of the way anyway so it's really two birds with one stone so I'm just gonna cut here like so and pick up a bunch of rocks trees and a couple pieces of ore possibly um, or iron and then I'm gonna come over here and slice out all of that iron and those couple trees up there Next, I'm going to come back down here, and because we really need wood to start, I'm going to pick up all the rest of that. Um, and after that, I'm just going to really sit back and kind of watch how things develop. I'm going to keep uh, one laborer, just to kind of have one guy running around doing whatever is needed at any given time. When these houses get built, I'm going to keep an eye on them, and if we need more, then I will make more, and I will tell you how I make that judgment call when we get there. But for now, let's click play, and we'll speed this up. So you saw, um, right off the bat, people started planting, which was, this is what's going to save us. Um, it's it's going to be a huge benefit. Okay, so as our houses um, get to be done, I'm going to slow us down here uh, for a number of reasons. One, because 
as these houses finish, we're actually going to have an excess of builders, like right there. So we want another laborer, for example. Okay, so we're about ready to start um, pausing again, and the reason why is because we just got this notice that we are pretty much out of firewood, and we're also done building things. So, a couple of other things. I believe that this field is going to produce enough food, hopefully, to get us through the winter. So I'm going to forego building um, a fisher's hut for the moment. What's it actually called? A uh, fishing dock. A fishing dock for the moment. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to build a road around my resources. Um, and the reason why I'm setting that up, I need to actually <coughs> remove that piece of iron. But I'm actually going to build um, a, uh, a woodcutter right probably here. Um, and here's why I do that. I found that if you build a woodcutter right next to a stockpile, um, they never have to walk very far to get the logs that they need to get um, to turn into firewood. This cuts down um, and basically allows your town to make firewood faster and is just kind of a trick that I picked up along the way. So we're going to unpause it now um, just to kind of let my town go along and start doing some resource collection which they need to do because we are pretty much out of wood. And also um, we need to pick up uh, these stones in order so that I can get that uh, next woodcutter's out of the way. And actually, I'm going to slow us down here a whole bunch, and I'm going to build it anyway, because uh, it will get picked up um, when I build that. So that's set to go. Next, what I'm going to do is, I'll pause it so I can walk you through it. I'm going to look at my houses and see um, kind of how people moved in. This is important um, because it allows you to figure out when you need to build new houses, and more on that in a second. Uh, the important thing to have a thriving household is you want a mommy, a daddy, and babies, or children. Um, that house, So this house is good, perfect example. Another house, no babies yet, but still, mommy, daddy, they're good to go. Here we go, these people have been busy. They're making babies left and right. Um, this is a very good household. Very strong. Also good. Very good as well. And no one has actually moved in here yet. So, this is interesting. Um, I should have only built five houses, but that's okay. Not a major problem. The first thing you're going to notice is... Um, so... You're, you're uh, about with town populations. You're, it's really divided into three categories. You have adults, students, and children. Um, adults basically are your worker bees. Students don't really do a whole lot, and children don't do anything aside from consuming resources. So, just picking around and clicking on a random adult, uh, you'll see they have this educated flag here. That is very important. If you have an uneducated society, it takes forever to get anything done. And you kind of just starve yourself out. Any task that you assign your town to do, it takes probably twice as long. It, it's really, really inefficient. So also in the first season, aside from building houses, collecting resources, and building a farm, or food in some way, shape, or form. Again, I like to use fields and possibly a fishing hut. Uh, the last thing you want to do that must be done first season is a woodcutter, so you have heat through the winter, and a school. The reason why you want a school is because you want any new children born to be educated. This will help you out tons in the long run even though the resource cost right now in the beginning is pretty high. So let's go ahead and give that a go and see how it turns out.
It's good they're chopping down all that lumber. Kick our builders up a little bit so we can get things started here. Okay. <clears throat> um, they're not starting fast enough, so there's a reason why they're doing this, and it's because of the order in which I assign the town to do things. Um, I assign them to basically clear all these resources, and then build this house, and then build that house. Or, uh, this woodcutter, and then build this school. That's nice, but it's not actually the order I want things done. So you can switch this. If you go to Tools and Reports, you can prioritize uh, what's being done. So I'm going to do that. I click that. And then I basically select this house here. And you notice that if I scroll down, I can actually prioritize those trees being cut down. Um, they're already pretty high at priority, so... Um, what I'm going to do is actually just increase the priority on that schoolhouse. So now if I go back and click play, and everyone's in fast motion, look what's happening. They're delivering resources to the school first and foremost, and the builders are going to start and start building it immediately. Which is exactly what I wanted. Again, the reason why this is so important, and the, why, the reason why you want to get it done early, is because... As your population makes children, as people make babies, um, when they hit the age of 10, they will either become an adult or become a student. And so what you're trying to race against here is you're really trying to race against building this schoolhouse um, before the first child hits the age of 10. So we're going to cut it pretty close here. Um, with this child. Let's see if we make it. Alright, so we made it. Um, what that means is we have <laughs> successfully had no child left behind um, as long as we have a teacher. So we have two free laborers right now. Let's go ahead and make a teacher. Now, when that first kid, um, when that first child hits the age of 10, instead of becoming an adult, they will become a student. And that is exactly what we want so let's go ahead and go back to play mode and people will continue to clear resources okay so it's early summer I'm keeping an eye on this because we will definitely want firewood before winter you can see these people are already freezing so what that means is we really should build um, this building before summer, or before winter. Um, also, we're out of food now, but this is okay because we're going to be able to harvest this field. Okay, so they successfully created... Um, the foundation here, so they're starting to build that. This really annoys me, and because I'm OCD and anal, I'm going to finish up that road there and go back to letting things play out. Um, in addition to doing that, though, I'm also going to take, um, since we have, we're going to have basically after that thing's built, we're going to have five people doing nothing so we need to come up with tasks for them to do so I'm going to clear out all of this to give us some more stone and lumber because as you can see our lumber is going to be low especially with a woodcutter and we are literally out of stone in addition to that our food is quite low and I am a little worried um, about how much we're going to have for this first winter so I am going to go ahead and build a fishing hut I'm hoping I can place it right here. Oh, look at that. That is magical. Um, technically, if I wanted to get more... Well, I should probably put it up here since there's, there's more water in the circle, but I think it's kind of fate that it worked out this perfectly. So we're just going to place that there and go back and let them play out and see what happens. Hopefully we we'll survive the first winter.
Okay, so I'm slowing down here because we have an excess builder. And I want a woodcutter now so that we can start preparing firewood for the summer. So you'll see he goes in there and starts making firewood, which is good. We're picking up our food. I'm going to pause things here real quick and make the dock a higher priority again because um, I really want that built so I again still a little nervous on the food but I think we're okay They're building the dock, that's good. We're gonna have extra people after they're done, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear out this whole section of resources, and my plan is gonna be, um, as long as this works all right, I'm gonna actually make a second field, probably right within here. Okay, so they finished up. Our builders are done, so let's get some fishermen there. And I really kind of want one guy left here. Um, okay, so here's an interesting and cool trick. It is going to be winter. Our field has been harvested. The farmers really aren't doing anything. Um, if you look, they're actually automatically helping out to clear these resources, which is good. That's kind of what I want. So we're actually going to make that guy go fish just to keep our food production up. But if they weren't, what you can do is you can basically remove these farmers. And the general rule of thumb is that you need to have one farmer per field. Alright, so it's winter. Um, we're in pretty good shape. We're building up our resources for uh, next year. I'm going to make our woodcutter just a random labor because we have plenty of wood to get through this winter. I'm going to do a real quick check on this house. No one's moved in yet, which is a little surprising. Um, so the way you make um, or ensure that your children or that your town continues to produce children, and this wasn't obvious, so it is fairly important. When a person becomes... 10 or is over 10, they will move out of the house if there is a person of opposite sex um, that is also over 10. So basically, it's possible that when this person turns 10, um, this brother and sister will shack up in this house together, which is kind of interesting. I guess for the sake of this game though, it's perfectly okay, and really if you're working to um, you know, rebuild population with only 21 people or 18 people or whatever they gave you in the beginning, that's going to have to happen, so uh, probably fine. So that is kind of a big problem. Um, we never want to be completely out of room, which we in fact are. So we need to account for this basically. Um, and what I would recommend doing is we need to make another stockade pile um, or stockpile. So let's go ahead and put that somewhere. I think we should probably place it on the back side of the woodcutter. So stockpiles are in our uh, basically storage areas. Um, stockpile. You notice that you can only make a stockpile of size 10. Um, so I usually like square stockpiles. We'll make this one 6x6. Six six. And let people go to town. 
So, you'll notice we are in really good shape for this winter. I don't know why they just told me that, because we have a whole second stockpile there, but... Okay, so something major just happened there. We just burned through 80 units of firewood. That was pretty ridiculous, so we're going to turn our woodcutter back on um, so he can get going on that and continue on. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to do a bit of planning here for next season. We are starting to run a little low on tools and clothes. So clothes is going to be the hard one because in the beginning the only way you can make new clothes is from the leather of animals that you kill. So what this means is you need a hunting cabin and you're going to hunt a really large area. Uh, because I kind of got unfortunate um, in the area that I started, uh, we're just going to have to place him here. Uh, so we will do that. Put that there. So there's now a hunting cabin there. Um, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is connect roads out to it. Because it's kind of off in the middle of nowhere. So we'll go ahead and line up our road to them. Again, um, I like to have the fr my road going along the front at least. Um, and then we can bring it back um, into town. Again, I said I was going to make that second field, so let's go ahead and do that now that we have every, everything all cleared out for it. Notice that I do have to remove two things there, so uh, that will take time. But first, I really want to have that um, hunting cabin up and going so that we can start actually making some clothes. Our woodcutter is again done. Let's go ahead and assign this to nothing since we did really well on food, but I always like to keep a backup field in the off chance that I see bad things are happening with my food production. Our resource collection has kind of come to a standstill, so I'm going to start that back up, clear that stuff out of the way. <clears throat> I'm not actually sure if it matters um, for the hunting cabin purposes in terms of how efficient it is at, um, you know, killing animals, I guess, Tra or hunting animals, if there's trees around. I'm going to assume that it does better with trees. So from now on, um, I'm not going to cut down these trees here. But just because I started on literally this small patch of land here, I am going to go through and take out all of the iron that is in the area. And I'm also going to take out all of the stone that is in the area. Okay. So, um, hmm. Oddly enough, no one has moved into this house. So... Let's go ahead and try something I've never done before. Let's go ahead and upgrade that house um, and see what happens. So we got our builder going to work there. Our farmers are now going back to work in the field. And they'll do that um, and tend the field just kind of, you know, while things are happening. If they have spare time, they'll go back to collecting resources. Okay, so the goal of this movie was that I survive to uh, the second season, which I did. Hooray, we made it. <laughs> um, and I've, I think I'm fairly well set up 
for the next season. I'm uh, well before we get into what the next season will bring. Let's recap what we did for season one first. Uh, we needed to build enough houses um, to house all of our people. Uh, next, what we did was we um, built a woodcutter and a school. Well, actually, this, the first thing we really should have done is build this field so that we can pull in a large amount of food to get us through the winter. Um, the next thing we did, and we ended up needing it, actually needing it, no joke, we would have ran out of food, is this fishing dock um, to help with food production. If you do not start near a river, what this means is that you'll actually need to have two fields, and you'll have to dedicate more resources to farming in order to have enough food to survive through the whole first season. Um, after that, what I did was I built uh, this woodcutter and the schoolhouse so that we are teaching um, our next generation. I had to increase my stockpile. I cleared out a bunch of resources um, to help me build all that stuff. So what I'm planning for the second season is we need to build a hunting cabin to start our coat production. I'm going to try to stockpile up on as much ore as we can so that I can start on tool production. I'm going to build, I've already actually built, another field to ensure that we have enough food to survive and I'm making sure that we keep um, plenty of storage available for that. And lastly, I'm paying very, very close attention to uh, the population in our houses and I'm seeing a worrying trend that people are not moving out and specifically they did not move out into this house. Um, not sure why they did that. So, um, um, I also thought that upgrade was going to turn it into a stone house, but I'm not quite sure. Um, why that didn't work out? Um, I think it's just because I don't have enough builders on it because he's over here working on this thing. Um, so next time, we'll see how Season 2 goes over. Uh, leave comments below if you liked it. If you want me to continue on with the series, I will. This is a very fun game. I highly recommend it. It's very addictive. In my opinion, it's way better than SimCity, purely because the game itself is very unforgiving. Um, in another game that I was playing, I think I made it to Season 16, and I had a very large population, 300-plus adults, maybe a hundred students and children and within one season I almost died. Um, I'll maybe make a video on on how that or that happening because um, I saved it right before the downfall of civilization so to speak. Um, but anyways leave comments below if you'd like me to continue this series uh, otherwise I hope you enjoy Banished.